Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Today's webinar is brought to you by Waters, the science of what's possible. My name is Kieran Faherty, and I am currently the America's Field Marketing Manager for Separations and Mass Spectrometry here at Waters. I'm happy to introduce today's webinar and provide a few helpful details before the webinar begins. This edition of our Meet the Expert series is the third and final part of a three-part series focusing on mass spectrometry fundamentals. Part three today will review some advanced techniques in mass spectrometry, namely ion mobility and MS imaging, techniques that are coming to the fore at the present time. I would like to provide a few reminders before we begin today's presentation. We will have a live text chat during today's webinar, and I will be handling that today. We encourage you to submit questions via the text chat during the presentation. Some of your questions will be discussed live by our presenter at the end of today's webinar, and any questions that cannot be answered live today will be addressed via email shortly after today's session. Following today's webinar, you'll receive an email where we'll provide you with a link to the recording of this webinar, a PDF copy of today's slides, and some reference materials we hope you will find useful. I'm happy to introduce today's presenter, Dr. Bindesh Stresser. Dr. Stresser is a Senior Application Support Scientist here at Waters Corporation in Massachusetts. He has co-authored more than two dozen peer-reviewed articles in the field of ambient mass spectrometry and MS imaging spanning the last decade. His scientific interest lies at the interface of biology and analytical chemistry, and he has worked on such projects as developing quantitative approaches and data analysis strategies for small molecule imaging using mass spectrometry. His publications have been featured in leading journals such as Angevanta Chemie, Analytical Chemistry, and Analyst, and he has more than 1,400 citations. With that, let's begin today's presentation. Thank you again for a nice introduction. Uh, I'm Bindesh Shrestha, and welcome again to this three-part webinar series covering the fundamental of mass spectrometry. Uh, the goal of this series is to provide some background on mass spectrometry to help you become familiar with the uh, system and technologies available today. In today's session, we will look two specific topics that have come to forefront in mass spec in the last few years, and namely ion mobility separation and imaging. Before we start with the advanced topics of ion mobility and mass spec imaging, uh, let's review some fundamentals of mass spec and when it's used in analytic labs. To begin, what is mass spectrometry? Uh, mass spectrometry is essentially a technique for weighing molecules. Obviously, you know, I cannot go and buy a very small weighing machine or we, uh, and weigh the molecule. So we use an analog technique. Uh, what it does is it ionizes the chemical species or molecules and sorts them by mass to charge ratio. So this mass to charge ratio data is what's shown in a mass spectrum acquired uh, in a mass spectrometer. Mass spec is a very versatile and flexible technique that can be used for different analytic challenges across many, many different industry and application areas. When deciding whether or not to use mass spec as part of your analytical toolkit, it's important to be aware of the regulation in individual industry as the analytical techniques or method uh, may be stated uh, within those regulations. Mass spec has become an important analytical tool to support uh, both qualitative and quantitative analysis. Uh, it can be used to do like various things, for example, to confirm if uh, the, uh, the compound is there or not, uh, to uh, confirm the identity of unknown compounds uh, in many types of sample. It can also be used in synthesis to check um, what is uh, put into a reaction, how the reaction is going, uh, 
uh, in purification step uh, or to characterize the resulting material. In pharmaceutical industry, uh, it can be used uh, to look at the life cycle of a drug uh, in test subject to ensure uh, its safety. Mass spec of information rich detection method, and there are many advantages of adding it to your existing workflow. For example, um, mass detection can be coupled with other detectors such as LC, allowing you to gain additional uh, information from the same sample during you know, exactly the same in injection. Mass spec is also very selective, um, has generally lower detection limit than uh, many other analytical techniques. That means that you can now detect very low abundance of uh, molecular species. It is also highly selective, so you can extract uh, chemical information of a specific compound from a very complex mixture, for example, tissue. Finally, uh, mass spec can be used to measure any compound that ionizes. What it does is this allows you to detect compounds that have no chromophore or have very low UV uh, response. A mass spec system can be broken into three major parts. A sample introduction system such as LC, the mass spectrometer, which uh, consists of ion source where the analyte is converted into gas phase ions. Mass analyzer, where ions are separated by their mass to charge ratio, or M over Z uh, values. And detector, where different M over Z ratio uh, are detected. Uh, finally, it has a data system, which acquires, process, generates uh, results of mass spec data. The two topics we are discussing today includes mass analyzer in case of ion mobility and entire mass spec system in case of imaging. Ion mobility as technique was first developed in 50s and 60s by Earl McDaniel at Georgia Tech. A standalone ion mobility system has been used for a while, especially in a lot of homeland security applications around the airports. Only in the last 15 years, ion mobility system coupled with mass spec has grown significantly uh, with the introduction of commercially available ion mobility mass spec system, such as Synapt. So how does ion mobility work? Here, um, you, know, you see a schematic of an ion mobility cell along with some ions moving through the cell. The cell is filled with a uh, low-pressure gas. Uh, most of the time, it's nitrogen. And, uh, and e there is electrical field uh, to the cell. Uh, what happens is we end up with two opposing forces, a driving force which moves the ion through the field. And simultaneously, we have resistance provided by gas. The resistance of ion movement is a function of its size and shape of the ions as they move through the cell. More compact structure will have easier time, you know, passing through the gas, and more expanded uh, structure uh, will experience more resistance. Uh, so, uh, in a nutshell, ion mobility provides us with a mechanism to uh, separate ion based on their uh, shape and size. Here's an example. Ion mobility separates ion based on their shape, size, and charge by tumbling through basically the ion mobility cell filled with gas. Smaller ions would come out first. Heavier ions would come out later. Molecules with the same M over Z but different shape, uh, like C16 uh, and H26 on right, um, you know, they would drift differently uh, if they have different shape uh, through the mobility cells and can be uh, separated. There are three main types of ion mobility spectrometry uh, in the literature right now. First one is a drift tube ion mobility spectrometry. Second is traveling wave ion mobility 
spectrometry. And the fir uh, like finally, uh, there is a field asymmetric ion mobility uh, spectrometry, or FAMES. Drift tube ion mobility system uses a long gas field tube uh, with a constant and uh, generally a low electric field. Um, what happens is ions are injected at the one end and the time taken to travel uh, the length of the tube is uh, measured. From this uh, we can calculate the velocity of the travel and if the field strength is, uh, is known, um, the ion mobility can also be calculated. In the drift tube uh, IMS system, iron must be injected into the system in short pulses, you know, for allowing it to all the ions to travel through the detector before another uh, pulse is injected. Traveling wave ion mobility system uh, also works very similar to drift time uh, system. Um, however, instead of having a constant electric field, uh, in traveling wave um, ion mobility system, we have alternate section of positive and zero electric field traveling parallel to the ion's uh, direction of travel. So basically the ions are carried along at the front of the wave uh, effectively like uh, surfing uh, over it. Um, as it travels uh, time through the system um, is being measured, iron must uh, still be fed into system in uh, short uh, pulses. In FAMES, instead of applying a field parallel to the ion's travel, an asymmetric alternate field perpendicular to direction of uh, their travel is used. Now, what happens is this causes ions to drift toward one or other electrode. Only ions with a, a very certain uh, differential mobility will pass through uh, the ion mobility system and detect it. By changing a DC compensation field um, and also changing the differential mobility, FAMES can scan different sets of ions one by one. For much of its history, ion mobility separation mass spec was a very uh, niche academic technique that required you to build your own instrumentation. Over the last few years, uh, the use of ion mobility mass spec has exploded due to availability of robust commercial system. Now, the systems shown here uh, have ion mobility incorporated uh, into high resolution uh, QTOF mass spec. Um, so, that the ions can be isolated using a quadrupole and then separated using uh, ion mobility and then ionized by time of flight mass analyzer. Ion mobility separation takes uh, only a few milliseconds, making it compatible with uh, you know, existing UPLC um, MS analysis or imaging uh, workflow. Having the ability to separate ions using ion mobility is very useful. While separating these ions, we are also measuring drift time of that ion in a gas. Uh, usually it's a nitrogen gas. Drift time uh, can be converted to rotationally average collision cross-section, or in short, uh, CCS. So this CCS value uh, provides us with the information on the size of the molecule, you know. So what it does is it gives us an insight into its structure, any kind of 3D conformation, and so forth. Um, so additional thing what CCS does is it also provides us uh, with a third possible data point uh, along, uh, you know, retention time and mass to size ratio uh, to identify molecules. So we can use um, accurate mass, retention time, and uh, CCS value to identify the molecule more confidently. Here's one example. Uh, these diaminotolin isomer almost collude chromatographically. But with ion mobility, we can use their CCS value to distinguish them and separate them. So we can use their LC retention time, their 
mass to charge ratio and their CCS value to confirm uh, their identity. An area which brings together a number of techniques we have already described and discussed in this webinar series is mass spec imaging. Uh, this technique encompasses like ion generation, separation, and analysis. And of course, uh, you get to see beautiful uh, images. So far in this webinar series, we have talked about two aspects of molecular analysis by mass spectrometry. You know, it's a identifying the molecule, and second one is to quantify that molecule. Now we're going to spend a few minutes talking about locating those molecules by using imaging mass spectrometry. So far, um, you know, we uh, do sample analysis using this workflow. This is a, a typical workflow for LC-MS uh, analysis. For example, if we want to analyze some metabolites in liver, tissue, what do we first do is we do homogenization, extraction, some more sample preparation. Then we're going to probably separate those uh, metabolites by LC and then have it detected by mass spectrometer and then, uh, you know, the result we're going to analyze uh, uh, by a data analysis system. In mass spec imaging workflow, we are not going to homogenize that tissue because that means that we are going to lose any kind of spatial information of a molecule in that tissue if you homogenize it. What we're going to do is we're going to take a section of that tissue, nicely place it in the slide, uh, some aspect technique, for example, Molly might need like some sample preparation, such as matrix deposition, some other techniques might not. Then we are going to uh, do pixel by pixel uh, mass spec acquisition in a mass uh, in a mass spectrometer, and then using a the software, we're going to generate ion images. Let's talk about mass spec imaging principle. It is applicable to basically any mass spec uh, imaging technique. First, we're going to get a nice, uh, it's in a section of a tissue. By using um, very localized ion source. Uh, we are going to take a pixel by pixel or spot by spot uh, mass spec of that tissue. So basically what happens is each pixel uh, will have its own unique mass spectrum. We can take uh, intensity of a particular ion, uh, say blue ion in the bottom, and plot its intensity at each pixel. This means we are plotting ion intensity as a heat map over XY plane. We call this ion intensity heat map as mass spec image. So we can select a different ion and now we're going to get a different uh, intensity heat map or different uh, mass spec image. So now the question is why mass spec imaging? A um, couple of its advantages. Uh, you do not need any kind of label or probe or any kind of tracer. It's a multiplex. That means you can do uh, tons of molecule at a time. Um, it gives you, and at the same time, it gives you specific molecular information on all those molecules. It has a high dynamic range. Uh, it is uh, somewhat uh, quantitative. And uh, what are its limitations? Um, for a limitation, uh, the biggest limitation is uh, you cannot do in vivo imaging. You know, it has to be done in context of ex vivo images. Other limitation is that you need to be able to ionize that molecule uh, you're interested in, and you need to have uh, enough um, uh, LOD to detect that molecule in the physio uh, physiological quantity present. 
There are many, many different mass spec imaging techniques uh, that are commercially available and even more described uh, in the literature. For example, uh, MALDI, um, matrix assisted laser desorption ionization, uh, LASI, laser ablation electrospray ionization, or uh, SIMS, um, secondary ion mass spec, RIMS, and so forth. It all comes with its own uh, nice little like acronym. Uh, each of those techniques have its own advantages and uh, are suitable for uh, uh, certain kind of uh, imaging workflow. One of the uh, most common mass spec imaging technique is MALDI or matrix assisted laser desorption ionization technique. In this technique, a uh, laser, a focus laser beam uh, will um, Desorb your sample uh, locally, and you know if you move your uh, slide stage, you you can uh, do pixel by pixel analysis and uh, get a mass spec image. Uh, for a MALDI, you need some kind of matrix coding uh, for ionization, and uh, most of this uh, MALDI uh, analysis happens uh, in a vacuum. So you would need to code the matrix and load the uh, slide into vacuum source um, and then do the analysis. Another common mass spec imaging technique is DESI or uh, desorption electrospray ionization. Here instead of a focus laser beam of a MALDI, uh, we have a pneumatically or gas flow assisted focus uh, electrospray jet uh, that is performing pixel by pixel desorption analysis. Um, DESI is a very similar to electrospray as you can even tell by its name and it is uh, highly um, amenable to analyzing drugs, metabolites, and lipids. Uh, it's ambient or atmospheric pressure ion source um, and it does not need any sample preparation beside uh, sectioning of tissue. If we look very uh, closely at DESI, we can uh, visually see electrospray uh, focused toward a sample stage. You know, what's happening is there is a desorption of uh, analyte and ionization happening in concert. There is a mass spec inlet right next to the um, desorption uh, site uh, to, uh, you know, lead away those ions inside a mass spec for uh, M over Z analysis. DESI was invented in Professor Graham Cook's lab in Purdue uh, in uh, 2004 by uh, uh, Zoltan Takas, Bogdan Golgan, and Justin Wiseman um, in the team. And we can see that the citation of uh, DESI has been uh, slowly increasing since uh, 2004. These are some of the photos of commercially available a DESI source uh, where you can see a sample stage with a couple of slides. You can see electrospray assembly uh, is placed right next to the uh, mass spec inlet capillary um, next to its orifice. You can see like a tubing for solvent delivery and so forth. DESI is commercially and exclusively available in Waters QTOF platforms such as Synapt XS. Synapt-XS is a very versatile uh, mass spec that uh, also support other imaging platform, uh, MALDI, and a host of uh, LCMS platform such as HDX, uh, Nano, uh, ESI, and so forth. And uh, in addition to that, it also has ion mobility separation. A typical uh, mass spec imaging workflow, this is more uh, tissue uh, section specific, but that's the most of the time, that's what we analyze by mass spec imaging. Um, first, what you need to do is you need to do a tissue section. It's usually done on a cryostat, and we're go, uh, taking about 10 to 20 micron section. Second step is, um, it depends on uh, what kind of uh, mass spec imaging platform you're using. If you're using MALDI, you would need a matrix coding step. Uh, for DESI, this step is not required. Um, 
Then the third step will be setting up the experiment, meaning you're defining the area to image, defining what kind of experiment you're going to do. Are you going to do just the MS-only experiment, MS-MS experiment, or ion mobility MS experiment, or ion mobility MS-MS experiment, and so forth. Fourth step would be uh, just to do the data acquisition in one of the QTOP mass spec. Fifth uh, would be to uh, do the visualization of the ions and do uh, some further analysis, some segmentation, statistical analysis, and so forth. And finally, you know, um, um, you got to make sense of those uh, special molecular information in context of your larger research. Here are some of the, um, you know, consideration uh, for tissue sectioning. Uh, during MS imaging, uh, first, uh, just a basic thing, you know, note like a sample origin and then, you know, address any kind of safety concern, like if you had diseases or you need like certain biosafety level labs and so forth. Uh, most of the time, um, fresh frozen sections are preferred. Uh, although there are a limited number of workflow for FFPE um, archived tissues. Uh, other thing is, uh, you know, make sure uh, to carefully note the orientation and coordinates of the sample during mounting and section and sectioning. If you look in the bottom right, you know, um, you can generate a different type of sectioning, you know, based on how you cut the tissue. You can be producing axial, coronal, or sagittal section, and um, even, um, for example, I've given here for coronal section, even based on where you section, what coordinate you section, you're, you'll be producing uh, different um, kind of sections. So make sure you are in a normal and uh, dizzy state of the tissue have a same orientation and the same coordinates uh, for sectioning. Section without a... Uh, OCT or optimal cutting temperature media uh, because it is uh, has a lot of pegs in um, you know it is going to suppress your ions. Um, um, do the cry sectioning around like 10 to 15 micron, but according to different kind of tissue, uh, you might need to change it slightly. Uh, but it's the rough guideline. And finally, um, store. Uh, these uh, section uh, in uh, minus 80 degrees Celsius freezer uh, until um, you know you're going to image them uh, by uh, MS imaging uh, workflow. Conceptually, MS imaging data is like a mass spec profile for each uh, scan. You know, so say for pixel one you have one mass spec, pixel two you have another. Uh, uh, mass spec and so forth, um, and you can imagine that you know you can easily convert this uh, mass specs into intensity table, where uh, you know you have a scan or pixel number, and uh, you, know, you have intensity of ion, and your scan and pixel number is going to correspond to certain coordinates. If we have a heat map definition. Uh, here's a simple, like a force color heat map. Uh, we can change it into a uh, uh, pixel by pixel image. Here I'm showing you an uh, image of my favorite three ions M over Z123, M over Z456, and M over Z789. Um, and you know, I can do this uh, in a piece of paper or PowerPoint slide. Uh, but as you can imagine, if I have like thousands and thousands of ions with thousands and thousands of pixels, um, it will be a very daunting task to do it manually. For those thousands of ions, uh, we can um, analyze you know, them uh, by using a software. And um, software, a good software really uh, makes your workflow very, very easy. Uh, so the, our software is called High Definition Imaging Software. It's divided into three parts, uh, uh, acquire, process, and analysis. Uh, in acquire part, you're going to do like, a, you know, image re uh, region definition, you know, like you're going to define a pixel size, you define again, MSMS or MS image and so forth. And in analysis side, you're going to um, define, um, uh, you know, like heat map definition, smoothing, overlay, region of interest, multivariate analysis, and so forth. Uh, this is a fully integrated software that supports both DESI, MALDI, uh, with ion mobility technology. Um, here I'm showing you a screenshot of our 
High Definition Imaging Software or HDI software. It's an analysis tab. In the center, you can see the image nicely display on the uh, bottom left. There is a table, and it's an interactive table, meaning you can it's a map list, and you can click on a map, M over Z value, and that image will show up in the middle. Uh, there are a lot of functionality. Uh, just briefly, you can do image overlay, meaning H and E overlay. Uh, with your mass spec image, you can, it's a multiple data set. It's supported be the Molly, Desi, Molly, Desi in a positive, negative ion mode. You can do multiple line overlay. You can define region of interest or ROIs. Um, and both uh, mobility plot and MS plot are interactive, meaning whatever ion you select in those plot, uh, it's going to get display in the middle. And one of my uh, favorite minor part, it's, uh, the, uh, it also gives you dynamic, dynamic scale bar, so you know exactly how big is your uh, you know, item or uh, specimen you are imaging. Here is uh, an example of a lipid ion at M over Z772 uh, of rat sagittal section created using uh, MALDI. In this example, I'm showing you a DESI MS uh, of a similar uh, sagittal uh, rat brain section. On top right, you can see like a three different ions. And what we can do is we can do overlay um, of those three different ions. So the bottom portion on the left uh, shows like uh, those same three uh, different ions as a blue, red, and green channels. Not only we can uh, overlay two different ions and get a contextual information. We can also get a contextual information of ion or ions uh, over an optical image, such as HNE image. Here is um, uh, the same ion at M over Z722 overlaid on an optical image, and you can see, like, you know, uh, where that ion falls based on the, uh, on, in context to the optical image. If your imaging mass spec has a high mass accuracy and other orthogonal technique, such as ion mobility separation, you can very confidently assign the ions uh, to metabolite. Here I'm showing you some of the ions, uh, you know, tentatively identified as a metabolite um, and lipids. Uh, DESI, in fact, actually excels at detecting uh, small molecules, such as metabolites from the tissue. Another application for imaging mass spec like DESI would be to not to look at just the uh, endogenous molecule such as metabolite and tissue, but exogenous molecule. This is an imaging experiment on a cassette dosed um, sample, liver tissues. And here uh, we can confidently detect the drug after two and six hour of dosing, but we can also detect uh, metabolites of those drugs. DESI imaging is just not only limited to analyzing tissues. Uh, you can also analyze the different uh, mammalian cell culture. Here are the three cell culture. And our goal was to see what kind of metabolite profile can we uh, image from the cell culture. Um, and you can see that we can readily detect uh, some of the metabolites and the lipid species uh, from the cell sample. Mass spec imaging, um, like, it's not just limited to, uh, you know, doing images of the mouse brain or a liver section or a mammalian tissue. Uh, we can also do an uh, image of a plant section. Here is an example of uh, analyzing ginsenocytes and ginseng root. Um, so the same uh, workflow exists. Uh, you are going to do a thin section, put it on a slide and do analysis. And... Uh, we can now, uh, by doing imaging, we can tell, uh, you know, if the ginsenocytes is in the outer, uh, outer um, surface of the root or in the inner surface. And uh, if we want to do confirmation of uh, those ginsenocytes, you know, if just, uh, if just not M over Z value is enough, what we can do is we can also do MSMS imaging. And by doing MSMS imaging, we can uh, very, very confidently confirm the identity of those molecules. Another example of DESI uh, is to detect uh, 
fraud. Uh, in this case, you know, we're detecting um, a check fraud. Um, since DESI is a relatively non district technique and you do not need to cut piece of it to fit inside the mass spike like a monthly target, and you're not going to do any kind of matrix deposition, we can, um, you know, just tape it on the uh, stage and do the analysis. And here, um, uh, the fraud detected was, it's a mock fraud, detected was, you know, like uh, making, adding a zero uh, after a check to make it like a, of a greater value um, than what it is. You saw on last slide that we can do very non-traditional sample surfaces imaging by DESI. Here, example of looking at fingerprint on your smartphone. So you can basically tell based on your fingerprint chemical profile who has used uh, your smartphone. Um, and uh, just to, like a word of a uh, you know, disclaimer here, uh, none of the iPhone were harmed uh, during uh, imaging of this iPhone. The same uh, flexibility that gives us uh, ability to image a smartphone also gives us ability to uh, image a very non-traditional surface. Uh, this is an example of uh, imaging drug implants, you know, after it goes through certain treatment to look at, like, uh, status of drug distribution on the implant. Uh, we actually started this experiment as a MALDI experiment, but it was so difficult for us to section it. You know, if we uh, cool the uh, implant, it, it will be, become very brittle and, uh, like, break away. If it's um, uh, not cooled, it was very malleable. Uh, so our simple solution was to tape it on a sample stage and do, like, ambient imaging using a DESI. And without doing any much sample preparation, we can nicely uh, image um, effective of various processing on this implant uh, using DESI. So you can see that we can, in mass spec imaging, we can, uh, you know, choose any M over Z value and make a two-dimensional map of uh, those values. Once again, I have the, my three favorite ions I, I, and their images, ion 1, 2, 3, ion uh, M over Z 4, 5, 6, and ion M over Z 7, 8, 9. But what to do if you have like, uh, you know, more than one molecule with the same uh, M over Z value. So what we can do is, you know, the same ion, M over Z, one, two, three, you know, if you have, uh, if it's separated in um, in ion mobility system, we can have a two drift time for it. So, you know, tau one and tau two, and based on those two separate drift time, uh, we can generate two uh, different, um, uh, images. Coupling ion mobility with imaging, uh, MS imaging gives, uh, first of all, separation, you know, because uh, inherently uh, your imaging sample are going to be very complex, um, such as tissue. Uh, so, for example, uh, you know, if nothing, it's going to separate in your MALDI all the matrix ions from your lipid ions. You can get a more uh, enhanced uh, uh, structure elucidation capability using ion mobility. And finally, you can do measurement of the CCS value that you can use as additional identifier uh, for your uh, molecules of interest. Here is an example of a DESI imaging uh, clarifying the uh, image of ion. Uh, for example, here, um, you know, you have a two different ions that are separated by 0 0.0013 Dalton. Um, it's very difficult to uh, separate them and image them, by, you know, without ion mobility. And with ion mobility, we can readily separate them and image them. And, uh, you know, what it does is it clarifies uh, image for both of those ions. In addition to bringing clarity to MS images, you can convert those ion mobility drift time into collision cross-section or CCS values. Uh, some of the example of a CCS value of some of the common uh, molecules, standard molecules, is given in the table in the bottom of the slide. And you can see that uh, collision cross-section uh, accuracy of this uh, measurement is less than 2% um, across the board. 
and uh, in many cases, like less than 1%. And this is independent of, of any kind of tissue or sample you're analyzing. So if I have to bring everything together, what I can see is imaging techniques such as DESI coupled with ion mobility separation does open door for very powerful experiment, uh, you know, which you couldn't do before uh, those tools were available. So in summary, ion mobility separation is a powerful technique that's compatible with existing LCMS workflow and provides you with a complementary fast gas fit separation for those overlapping isomeric ions um, and isomeric uh, species. Direct ionization source, such as Imaging uh, cannot use uh, pre-ionization separation, LC separation, but can use uh, post-ionization separation, such as ion mobility, to enhance uh, clarity of the images. Collision cross-section, um, or CCS, can be utilized as orthogonal identifier of a molecule, uh, along with, uh, you know, of course, accurate mass obtained from high resolution uh, QTOF instrument and retention time. Uh, MS imaging uh, done on QTOF system uh, provides uh, localization of uh, various small molecules such as metabolite, lipids, and drugs. Um, DESI imaging uh, does not need any sample preparation beside a sectioning of a tissue. And finally, uh, Synapse G2XS offers a DESI, MALDI, LCMS, and ion movie separation uh, in the same MASPEC platform, uh, providing with uh, ultimate flexibility for your research. And with that, uh, I would like to thank you, all of you, and I will uh, take your questions. Thank you very much for tuning in.